My name is Cassandra and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the book Marie Kondo's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and I'm going to be summarizing this book for you. Now a lot of you might know she has a new Netflix series um, where she does go over a lot of the basics and show you going into people's homes and what she does, but this book definitely um, goes in deep into her practices. And it sort of reminds me of what it would be like if you were to hire her um, to come in and to actually take her course. Her whole thing is start by discarding and then organize everything in thoroughly in your space in one go. As she says, a dramatic reorganization of the home causes corresponding dramatic changes in lifestyle and perspective. It's life transforming. So she talks about things later on in the book, like people have lost weight after, you know, they've discovered hobbies that they hadn't realized they, they, they loved so much, you know, like developed passion about things. And just, she does um, talk about so many life changing things that happen after people organize their homes properly. And then she says, can you imagine being surrounded only by things that you love? And so she talks about constantly in the book, like being lazy and all these things, which I definitely relate to. I think that's part of why I'm a terrible housekeeper because I'm like so dang lazy and I just can't be consistent with it. So that was really refreshing to me to find out that she feels like she's lazy. So it, it definitely made it seem like, okay, maybe I can do this too. Because when you watch her in the show, she seems like completely perfect and like it's not as relatable as reading her words in the book. Many people, um, she says, don't believe that it's possible to keep their homes tidy, which I totally believe because I feel like that all the time. So chapter one is why can't I keep my house in order? But if you just start organizing your storage, which was basically what I've been doing, eliminating a little bit here and there, then things will always revert back to how they were. You don't store things until you identify if you need them or want to keep them. So, and then she also insists that you do do it by category and not location, which I've never done before either. I've always just done like room by room, but she insists that this is the way and we will go over exactly um, the order to do things later on. So this is a way that you can ensure all related items are in the same place. So for example, you start with clothing and you bring all of your clothing out from every area of your home you know, shoes, accessories, everything. And that way, when you're done, you can find a place to store it all together. There's three different types of people. There are the can't throw it away type of people, the can't put it back type of people, or the first two combined. And most people are the first two combined. We are notorious for like getting something out and not being able to put it back. But I would say I'm not a really a can't throw it away person, but we'll see as I start to do this method. If you guys have seen my decluttering series, I'll uh, put it in a card or link it below. Um, definitely check that out because that will be our starting point, or I guess your starting point to see, to see the before and afters of me trying to just do decluttering. And then I'll show you um, what it's going to be like when I Marie Kondo things. I'll show you step by step of that too and see if there's any improvement. Chapter two is finish discarding first. So how do you decide what to get rid of? Well, you choose what to keep, not what to throw away. So hold each item and ask, does it spark joy? And if not, discard it. And I have to admit, when I first read that, I thought, okay, that's a little hokey, you know, like does it spark joy? But the more you go on in the book, the more you kind of understand what she means by that. And it's not this hokey, strange thing. It's truly about identifying what you need. The, the order that you go in is first clothing, second books, third papers, four kimono, I hope I'm saying that right, kimono, or miscellaneous, and five is mementos, or you know, if your family is not on board with this, the whole declutter thing, which is definitely a thing in my home, my husband's not as on board with getting rid of his things that he thinks he might use, then to just focus on decluttering your own things and eventually over time with your example and things like that your family will get on board um, that's been her experience which is comforting um, so just to focus on starting with the areas or the items that just belong to you and leaving communal areas till the end if you feel annoyed with your family for not discarding and having too much stuff and whatever then to check your own space because usually this is a sign of you having too many things and you um you know not doing a good enough job, which I think is a good principle in life. <laughs> if we're ever judging someone or we're ever, you know, annoyed with someone or whatever, we should just look at ourselves and try to improve ourselves. That's a good uh, marriage advice too. <laughs> 
and try not to burden people with your stuff. I really liked this part that like a lot of people think, oh, I'm getting rid of all my coats. Um, I'm going to, she tells a story about a coat in the book uh, where she had all these coats and I think it was coats, maybe sweaters. I don't know. And she decided to gift them to her sister because she thought she might need them. But instead of, then that's a great thought. And sometimes people do need them. Most of the time they don't. And it's just a burden to them and they have to find a way to donate them or feel guilty about keeping them or whatever. All the things that we felt before were just passing on to someone else. So don't do that. Just donate them. She says the best time to go, to go about this um, Kamari method is to start in the morning, which makes sense. Most people are most productive in the morning. So that's a good thing. Um, and don't think of it being wasteful. Like if you've never worn the shirt that you are, you know, debating to get rid of, then you're probably not going to wear it. Like you don't want it or like it probably. So just like, it's not a wasteful thing. It's, it's, it's going to bring, she believes like every item or inanimate object has like feelings, which is kind of strange. But anyway, so she's like, oh, you're bringing joy to the item by letting it go, which um, I, the things I do appreciate about that though, I will say right now, because she does talk a lot about like talking to your items and saying thank you and saying, well, you've had a hard day, have a rest kind of thing. Um, it is just that she has such extreme gratitude for everything that she has. And I think that there is a lot to be learned from that. And I would love to get to the point where she's at, that she's so grateful for all of her things and so appreciative. And I, I do like that about the book. Um, and she said, can you truthfully say that you treasure something buried so deeply in a closet or drawer that you've forgotten about its existence? So she doesn't really believe in storage too much. Um, it, everything should be visible. When you look in your storage, you should know exactly where things are. There should be a place for everything. So the third chapter is tidying by category. So here's where we get into the categories and subcategories of what uh, you should be doing. So you start with clothing, start with tops, bottoms, then suits, coats, socks, underwear, bags, accessories, clothing for specific events like swimsuits, kimonos, uniforms, shoes. So you place every item of clothing in your house into on the floor or on the bed. Um, then you pick up every single piece of clothing and you say, you know, does this spark joy for me? And if not, then you get rid of it. So you, she says to start with the off-season clothes. That's a little easier because you're not thinking, oh, I just wore this yesterday, you know, like it's practical. I should keep it. So then she recommends a certain folding, um, which I'll show you in an upcoming video when I do my clothes. I already do this folding method because after I saw the show, um, I decided to fold all of our clothes that way. And it's been awesome. It's awesome to just open your drawer and be able to identify, like she says, every single clothing item in the drawer. And also she recommends keeping your off season clothes and like this season you're in clothes now, whatever together. Don't like store your off season clothes, keep them together in the drawer closet or whatever. All right. So the next one is books. So again, put all your books on the floor um, and then sort in four categories, general. So you're reading for pleasure books, practical, your references, your cookbooks, stuff like that. Visual photography books, collections, things like that. And then magazines. So unread books are harder to part with because you haven't read them, but she says, chances are you're probably not going to read them and just get rid of them. And she said, like, as you're doing this, she says, no one has ever like regretted getting rid of something. And if you really feel like you need it down the road, you just repurchase it. Okay. So the next category is papers, newspapers, announcements on the fridge, mail, everything. She just wants them all gone. She wants you to basically have no papers in the end, throw out credit card statements, product manuals, greeting cards, old budgets. And then she says to store warranties in a clear folder. And so obviously you're always trying to get rid of your, or needed for a limited period bin. So if it's like bills to pay, whatever it is, you're trying to get rid of it. You want that empty. And again, that they're all stored in one space. So the next thing is kimono. Kimono has a list and there are 11 items. So first is CDs and DVDs, skincare products, makeup, makeup, fourth accessories, five valuables. So like passports, credit cards, things like that. Six electrical equipment and appliances. Seven is household equipment, stationary sewing kits, things like that. 
Um, the next is household supplies, so like medicine, detergent, tissues. So nine, kitchen goods, food supplies, um, spatulas, pots, blenders, things like that are all kitchen goods. Ten is other, so like figurines, junk drawers. And eleven is any hobby things. So she also says like if there's something you have a lot of, um, it, whatever it might be that's not on this list, then that's its own separate category. Gifts. Oh yeah, I love the section on gifts. That is like one of my favorite parts of the books because she talks about when someone gives you a gift, it's to bring joy to them and to make them feel good about giving you something. And and you shouldn't feel bad about getting rid of that gift if you don't want it. Like wedding gifts, like people hold on to wedding gifts that they don't even use. And then they're just doing it because someone gave it to them as a gift. But like, that person's going to be happy knowing that you're happy. So like, get rid of it if you want to get rid of it. You know, like some people might be offended. Yeah, but they shouldn't be. If they're giving you a gift, they should be doing it to make you happy. So if getting rid of that gift makes you happy <laughs> to have a clutter free home or whatever, then you should do that. Um, you shouldn't use it out of obligation. So she says, get rid of electronic plugs, unidentified cords, broken appliances, stored bedding. She says like most of the time we don't even use our stored bedding and it gets like mildewy in the closet and you're not going to want to use it when guests come over anyway. So just get rid of it. Um, spare buttons, free novelty gifts, things like that. And put coins directly in your wallet. Don't use any piggy banks. Which, so the next thing is sentimental items or the uh, mementos, I think she calls them. So this is the hardest category, but she talks about how when we get rid of these things, we'll still have the memories. And that's really what we're trying to hold on to. Get rid of old love letters from exes. Let's sort your photos. And she talks again about like that whole giving to your kids. Like if you're, you have like six photo albums for your children to pass along. Like that's a burden for them. Like they have to store these photo albums. Like just keep the pictures that are really, really like I have a picture of my daughter literally in like every outfit she owned for like the first year of her life like she had so many cute outfits and I just took pictures every day and I have them all in a photo album for her which I just did so like this is so hard for me to know that I'm gonna have to go back through all those photo albums and like all the cost of printing that I did and like redo it because she's right like I have an entire photo album for one year of her life like Wow, I'm gonna give her 18 photo albums when she no, I'm not, right? Like four is storing your things to make your life shine. So she says to designate a place for each item in your home. And she says that seems daunting at first, but it it you it's necessary in order for you to stay tidy. So each person should have his or her belongings in a separate closet or a separate space for each person's belongings, which I liked. Um, and your own bookshelf, even like things like that, your own shelf on the bookshelf, um, storage should reduce the effort needed to put things away, not to be convenient for you to grab. Vertical storage is always best. She says so like no piles of things. She recommends shoe boxes and lids and any box from any Apple product as, as boxes to store things. And so for example, like in her drawer, she'll have like a box where you keep your socks or your ties or your bras and underwear things like that um, and she says like this isn't an expensive thing where you need to go out and buy all these dividers or storage organizers or things like that uh, or plastic food containers too but always make sure they're squares she says because you're wasting so much space um, storing like a circle container. Um, store bags and other bags so like purses should go in purses you know grocery bags and grocery bags and empty your purse when you arrive home especially if you're switching purses and stuff every day you know how it is like your purse there's like a million things at the bottom that you like empty out every what like half a year and it's like oh here's all these receipts and gum and I don't even know it just like it builds up uh, she wants you when you go in the shower to not store your soaps and stuff in there to take them out when you get out dry them off and put them away somewhere it's interesting though because it's true they get all like mildewy and gross in there so she doesn't want that and same with the kitchen sink like your soap and whatever dish wands or whatever you have there to store them underneath the sink dish racks even stuff like that I think that's like a fly lady thing <laughs> that's like I think it's like step one or two in fly lady that like I failed right away anyway <laughs> so if you have uh, memorabilia like posters or whatever to hang them in your closet and have that sort of like a sacred space where you can go and enjoy those things and so the fifth one chapter is the magic of tidying dramatically transforms your life 
And so summed up, um, this chapter is just that she basically just that she has a tremendous amount of gratitude and respect for everything. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Um, let me know if you've done any of these KonMari methods already and how it's gone for you. Every time you guys subscribe or I have a new subscriber, I get so excited. So thank you so much for everyone that subscribed already. And I hope that you subscribe today after watching this video. Also, give it a thumbs up if it's been helpful to you. Thank you so much for all of your support. Uh, I love you guys.